Welcome to LOA Today. I'm Walt Thiessen. I've been doing this podcast since September of 2012, and boy, are my lips tired. This is your daily dose of happy. We are so happy you decided to join us today. Jody Lynn can't do it today. She can't do the show. She's uh, got something that, that came up. Actually, she's not feeling all that great. She's a little under the weather, so we'll be welcoming her back next week. And, and the guests that we scheduled for today also had to cancel at the same time. It's kind of a rare event that both things happen at the same time, but they did. Uh, so I started getting creative and, and reaching out and thought of a couple people. And one of the people I reached out to was my old friend, Joel Elston. And it turned out, miracle of miracles, he actually had a little time to do a show today. So, hey, Joel, how you doing? It's great to see you, my friend. I'm doing fantastic. I'm really glad to hear that. And it's so good to be talking to you. Um, I mean, the last time you were on, you were on with me and Jody Lynn and we kind of hinted that wouldn't it be great if we could find some way to make the schedules work. And, and on this particular occasion, I, I realized I didn't have to do it at the same normal time that I normally do and proposed it to you. And you said, well, I could do it a couple hours later. I said, okay, let's do that. So here we are. We're doing a show. This is great. It feels like old times. I mean, it does. Yeah, doesn't it? it really does. It, you, I've, I've been on you, uh, your show with a few guests over the last little bit, but I think this may be the first time yeah. it's just you and I for a while now. Yeah. That's right. For a few years, I think. Yeah. 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 Which is kind of cool. Of course, the only, there is one difference from the last time we did it. We actually can see each other. We, we, we now have the video. We didn't have the video before, right? Back in the day, we did not. Yeah. 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 In fact, uh, I, I like telling the story about how I figured out early on how to be able to do a um a conversational type podcast because it was before Zoom, it was before StreamYard, it was before all these different tools that we had that we have today to to record stuff with. What what I actually I don't know if you remember this, I actually had to find a little piece of software that would allow me to tap my own phone so I could call you on the phone, record it, and then turn that into a podcast afterward. I mean we 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 had several versions as we kept moving and your technology improved slowly one one was called blue jeans or something like yeah, that that was and later it, on yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah and then uh there there was one podcast in particular we were doing that we you and i were really in the middle of it. we're going well and you remember and you realized we're not broadcasting yeah. it was, <laughs> we, we we were 45 Oops. minutes into the podcast you go oh i forgot to hit the button <laughs> uh, so, but we we there were many times that I've, I've always those are some of my fond memories i always enjoyed the podcast and uh, the law of attraction, as you know, is my, it's just my number one topic that I, mm. I'm so passionate about. You and I share so much, uh, uh, for the love of the law of attraction, the understanding of how it works. And uh, that's just the foundation of our friendship, which, yeah. uh, it, it goes back now several years. But again, I, most of our audience doesn't know that you and I have physically never met. I know, which is so strange because it is so weird. we lived in Virginia and you live in Virginia. We were at, at most two hours apart, I think maximum. Yes. And we never yeah. met. It's so strange. We never, yes. Yeah. We, we only have done it this way. Right. But this is the way I know you. So it, it, in that sense, it makes sense. It does. It does. So, uh, it, it, again, it, I really, I really enjoy seeing you, uh, and our audience. I, I always have great feedback from the people that watch and or listen. And it's just something that, uh, I, I've, I have a fondness. I do a lot of different things, but, uh, this is always one of my favorite things I'm, I can do in a day. I'm so glad we were able to work it out today. Yeah, me too. Oh, I'm really, really glad about that. Uh, one thing I wanted to tell you about, um, I, I've been hinting to the audience that there are changes afoot in my life without giving everybody the details yet. Um, but one thing that you'll be glad to know is I've actually started to work out. I don't, I, I still won't go to a gym. I, I know you love gyms. I can't. The, the idea of walking into a gym is kind of equivalent to walking into a dentist's office as far as I'm concerned. But I'm working out at home now. So I, I wanted to tell you that. I wanted to let you know, you know, I, I'm taking steps in that direction. It's just there are no gymnasiums involved. That's all. <laughs> okay. Well, and, and it, movement is we start with movement. And right. the for the audience that may not know that I'm, I'm passionate about working out. I'm in the gym oh, every very. single day. Uh, I've been doing this. I, I owe my life, I believe, to working out. Uh, it is, it's, it's the single biggest thing I do for my health and my, as well, mental health as well as physical health. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I, being a life coach, one of the, my basic mandatory requirements is some form of movement. Now it doesn't have to be the gym, but get, you know, if you're working at home, get going. The body is, uh, the remedy for so many things is movement. And, uh, it also applies to the law of attraction, but as we were talking before the show, but also movement of the body, it creates chemicals that, 
uh, help reduce depression, anxiety, uh, the muscles strengthen, uh, uh, mu- bone density increases when you exercise. As, as people age, bone density decreases, but exercise actually reverses that. So the, the, the fact you're doing that means a lot. I'm so excited you are because we've never, you've never bought into that concept with me. You've always, uh, you know, and, uh, uh, I would love to see you actually get in the gym because you'll realize your fears or whatever, whatever that is, uh, is, is non-existent. It's one of the most em- empowering places you can be. <laughs> well, don't hold your breath on that one, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm just glad you work it out. <laughs> I actually, you'll, you'll remember a few years ago, um, when Louise was sick, I, I actually joined the gym at that point and I, I did go to the gym. I didn't go for, you know, as long perhaps as I could have, but, um, I, I went multiple times and, the experience really did reinforce what it was I didn't like about gyms. Um, but one of the things I really dislike the most is that they have these TV monitors all over the place and they're invariably showing newscasts, which is about yes. the last thing that I want to see. <laughs> yes. Yes. I, 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 and I do, I, that is, and you know, I, that's one of my things. I do not watch the news at all. No, I know. Are. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so you, you have but, to have like some sort of like blindfold on where you're just, well, I don't, but I, I put these things in my ear. I listen to whatever law of attraction book I'm listening to and I don't look up. I just mm-hmm. go. So, yeah. uh, I, I, I do not make eye contact with those because, uh, uh, to my, to me, the most toxic thing that one of the most toxic things I do is engage in what they quote unquote call news or this, what I call programming. Uh, yeah. uh, that, well, that's same thing, that. really. Yeah. yeah. Same thing. So, yeah. So we're <laughs> on the same page there. I, I, that is the negative of the gym. I have encouraged them, uh, to remove the news. And, and when I'm in the gym, they'll, you know, the smaller, I belong to several gyms, as I may have mentioned. Uh, the smaller gyms, I, I could change the channel. The bigger gyms, I request they turn the news off and they usually comply. That's pretty good. I like that. Yeah. yeah. That, that, that would make it a little bit easier for me for sure. I mean, and it's not like I've, I haven't been exercising. I, I've been walking for years and, and sure. I'm, I, I'm, I'm in great shape from the waist down. I just need to do the other half. So right. that's what I'm right. working on is the other half. So resistance I, training is different than, than the cardiovascular training. So you, yeah. you need both. You need both for sure. Well, I, I acquired a tool that, uh, Louis D'Souza, you'll remember Louis because he was, yeah. he did a show with us a couple of times. Louis recommended it. It's called a Bulgarian bag. Have you ever heard of that? Yes, I have. Yes. Yeah. Well, I, I got myself a Bulgarian bag. So I've been, I've been playing with that a little bit and learning how to use that. And uh, I, I think I actually got one size too large. <laughs> so. if, if, if you're going to air, Error on the side of large. Yeah, so, probably. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but but let's just say that I, there's a, a video he shared with me that had like 12 different exercises they were demonstrating. I can do like three of them so far. So that, that gives you an idea what happens when you kind of err on the wrong side. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, well, now one one thing that I will always say, I I, I tend to be more. I'm I'm always about more. So there there I'm I'm never less. So if anything, I'm always erring on the other side. So I get it. It's not always the best thing, but. Uh, if, if it's, if it's, if the question is no matter the subject, two or three, I'll take three, four, or th- you know, four or five, I'll take five. I'm always erring on the upside. So. And, and I have to say, for those who don't know what a Bulgarian, I didn't know what a Bulgarian bag was. I had to go look it up. I had to go do the research to find out. It's kind of like this U shaped bag, just chock full of, of a material, usually sand or something like that, um, to give it weight and bulk. And it has handles at the two, Ends of the U, cause the U, you know, a U comes up and, and, and finishes at the top. Those are like the handles of the thing. And you just do a variety of different exercises with this thing. And it, I, I think what it actually does more than anything else is it makes the exercises interesting because you're playing with this bag while you're doing these exercises. It's not, it's not the more mundane stuff. It's, it's like, okay, this is an interesting way to try to lift something. Okay. Let's see, let's see what we can do with it. I think it's it creates, me in great. It, it's yeah, me it's involved creates, because of that. Exactly. It creates more of a functional use. And if you're yeah. lying on a bench press doing that, you know, that that's an effective exercise, but there's not a lot of function to that. The the body was never intended to push a lot of weight away. The, the whole point of being able to push away was to, to move the body away, not the weight away. So mm, a Bulgarian right. bag or any of these, any, that type of training is more functional. So it, it, cre- it, it creates being off balance. So it, it is yeah. a more functional concept and, it is, I, I, well, I, I still do traditional weight training, but I have added a lot of functionality to my training as well. So that, that's, okay. I'm glad you're doing that. Yeah. 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 And, and the, the one good thing I can say that really helps more than anything else is that it's enabling me to feel like I can do it every day. As yes. You know, that's the most important thing with any kind of exercise. You got to do it yes. continuously every single time. Otherwise you don't develop the habit. 
And then one, one, like anything else that we talk about, once you do it enough, uh, then it gets programmed to the subconscious brain. Uh, a, fun, a quick story. The, yesterday, my, as I said, I belong to several gyms, but the main gym that I go to uh, is I drop my son off at school. Then I go straight to the gym before I, I begin my, my day working. And they had been posting for weeks that the gym on that day was going to be closed until 2 p.m. So every day I saw that, I go, I need to mentally mark 2 p.m. And, you know, I'll go to another gym that morning. Mm-hmm. So the habit of going to the gym, I, I drop my son off. I drive to the gym. And as promised, they were closed. And I laughed. I said, I'm just so programmed and conditioned to go to that gym. Even mm-hmm. five minutes before I left, I dropped my son off. I'm going, I just, I, it almost drives automatically. So get to the place <laughs> where you're driving automatically. That's what we're shooting for. Driving or whatever it's going to take. I mean, in my case, I'm not driving to a gym, but I have a routine. Yeah. And that routine, I mean, it, well, I, like I've always done, I, I do my, my outside nature walks. So the routine starts with a nature walk. And then when I get home, okay, now that I've gotten home, first thing to do is, is to take a little protein and carbon so I've got something to work with and then start working with the Bulgarian bag. So I've created routine just by tying it into something that I was already doing. Perfect routine. I love that. Yeah. Very effective. And and yeah. it does the one thing that I, I knew I needed to do, which was find a way to do it every day. You're, 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 meeting that, you're meeting that goal. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Now, there's an interesting thing that goes along with that. The interesting thing is how how hard or how far do you work? Because what I was finding very at the very beginning was I couldn't go very far. <laughs> if I could do five minutes, that was something. <laughs> and I think, right. well, wait a minute, whoa, 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 I gotta get better than that. But I, I realized also that that meant I just had to kind of work it up a little bit. Let it just you know develop a little bit every time, a little bit every day. I think I'm up to like 15 minutes now of, of doing you know in, intense exercises. And then uh, just let it go. And, and it's going to build at the rate that it can build. And there are some days where I just can't even go to 15. But, okay, I, I did 13 today. <laughs> and, and, that, and the body that adapts. The body's an amazing mechanism that, that uh, it, it, will, it will always adapt. you gotta, you got to feed it. you got to rest it. you got to do the right thing. But, and, and, and you know, as we age, that process takes a little longer. But it's still very doable. And so you're doing it the right way and you, you just keep working up it, it, it will, you'll get there. The other thing too, is um, you mentioned age. I'm not so sure it's really age as, as it is lack of activity. And uh, I mean, we've talked a lot about the importance of mindset and our mindset. We, we, we all try to work on our mindset. We try to make our mindset as good as, as we can make it, but we all have off days too. And there are times where the mindset just isn't there and you're doing the best you can, but it's not really working. Well, you know, that can carry over to what's happening with your body, if you, especially like me. I wasn't doing a regular workout other than the walks. And, I mean, over time, I was kind of paying the price for it. So, for instance, the idea of, of – actually, there's a, there's a situation where about two years ago, I actually injured knees because I was not doing any kind of strength work. I was just doing the walking, which is good, but it's just not the same thing. And – I, it took me a while to heal it until I finally remembered that I could use the mind to heal, and then I healed it in a week. Um, but since then, I've noticed that, you know, I, if I wanted to go into a squat, I could do, I could get into a squat maybe once, and then I have to kind of push my way up from the floor, and it was a strain and so forth. Just doing these exercises I'm doing every day, I, I'm doing, you know, like 20, 30, 40 squats in a day. It's like, whoa. That's pretty good. I mean, I've only been working out for a month. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, that is fantastic. It really is. So I guess my point is it shows that it, even if you have gotten to the point where you've allowed everything to degrade, it can come back fairly quickly if you're willing to put the work in. Absolutely. It, and it, it, I, I've seen people in their 80s that start working out with great success. They develop additional muscle tone. They lose fat. Uh, it helps with um, uh mental acuity. There's just so much of it. it. It helps. And more than anything, the most important, you, you already touched on it. The most important factor in any of this is mindset it, mm-hmm. because your mindset's what allows you to believe you can do it. And the body will always respond to what it believes it'll, what the mindset's telling. I, I was uh, looking at a, a course that I was taking uh, that I've been taking the last uh, few weeks. And uh, the instructor of that course was also talking about mindset. She was talking about visualization. It's a uh, it's non LOA approach, so it's more I don't know what you call it, maybe more mainstream approach. Uh, but 
the way she was teaching it was kind of interesting because um, it's, well, first of all, the I, I think it had to do with the audience that, that she's reaching. It, she, it was a highly structured approach, which is not my way of doing things. <laughs> I'm not that structured. Um, but in that, in, in the way that she was structuring it, I realized that a lot of people are being exposed to ideas like meditation, like visualization, in a, in a wide range of areas. I mean, not just life coaches, but all kinds of coaches. And we've here on the show, we've had all kinds of different coaches on just in the last year. And, and they're all doing some variation on that. And it's always going to look a little bit different. It's always going to be experienced a little bit differently. And, and it reminded me of conversations you and I had in the past, in the early years of this podcast, where we talked about, you know, what kinds of processes do you bring on board? What kinds of, of methods do we bring on board to affect mindset, to, to change what uh, we're thinking about, to change, uh, you know, the voice in the head, all that kind of thing. And it, the, the experience of, of, of taking this particular course I'm talking about reinforced for me one of the things we talked about a lot, which was you go with what works for you. You try things. You see, does this approach work? Does that approach work? And then you adapt it to yourself. So even though I know about visualizing, I know about meditating, and, and the way she was doing it wasn't really working for me, there was still some stuff I could adapt into what I do. And that, yes. that, that, that's actually very similar to what we're talking about with the exercise. You, you adapt it to what you feel like you can do, what, what, what fits you. And what fits it, it's there, there's people that love yoga. I'm not a big yoga fan, but yoga is right. great. It, it, yeah, there, yeah. There's CrossFit. There's all these other type things that, you know, Pilates, not that I'm into all yeah. Pilates. Yes. But I, the, I'm about the movement. What matches your personality type? Some people love group fitness. Some people, mm-hmm. it, it doesn't really matter. It's the movement that matters. It's the mindset that gets you there. And if you believe it's working, it's working. If you believe the more you're into it, it, it and I'm always saying the, whether it's treatment modalities for different things, it, it is all based on what you believe is going to work and it, what matches personality. I, I know a lot of times when you're walking somebody through the concepts of the law of attraction, you know, my, my normal introduction is read the secret, read the secret, you know, mm-hmm. and then, and then discuss it. And then, Oh, that's nice. They like that. And say, okay, now let me tell you a little bit about this, you know, the law of attraction by Abraham Hicks. Let me explain a little bit of this. So, cause that gets a little woo woo for some people. No, yeah. And, yeah, and, and you lose some people and some more. And, and so I, I, there's some people that are basically secret people and you, that's fine. There's enough to work with there. Then there's law of attraction people that, that, you know, they're really getting in the process. And that's, you know, that's next level. Then we got, you know, then we got that really, if you want to go deep. We got some Seth stuff, you know, and so, <laughs> you know, which, which most people are just going to be, well, well, let's just get back to that law of attraction. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, but, but nonetheless, it, there, even within the spectrum of what we're talking about, there's variations. There's, but I have not found a method that works with the law of attraction every single time for every single person. Um, I often describe my views on the law of attraction as I'm, I'm, I'm mainly an Abraham Hicks concept guy. Mm-hmm. And I'm 85 percent Abraham Hicks. I really am. Mm-hmm. I, but I got some, some of the stuff that nah, I'm not necessarily on that board with. That doesn't mean that they're wrong and I'm right. It means that's what works individually for me. That's which how is it works. What it should be, which is exactly yeah. how it should be. Now, yeah. um, we talked last time a little bit about, and I want to kind of bring it out some more. You, the, one of the how many? I'm not sure how many books you have you're working on right now. I know there's at least two. Uh, is, is, are there more than two that you're working on? I, I have, I have. Multiple books I'm working on. I have one okay. main book I'm working on called The Law of Action. Right. That was, you know, that's and, the main and, one. And that's the one I want to talk about the most. But there, how many yeah. are there total that you're working on? Now it's up to nine because. Really? Do, oh my yes, God. But, <laughs> but I, so in The Law of Action or whatever I'm writing, I get a new idea that doesn't fit for that book. So uh. I start a new outline. And so, you know, I, I have like nine outlines <laughs> in these other books and. I have a very, I'm very ADHD brain, and I say that in a very positive manner. So people that don't know, I, I, I believe ADHD is a superpower. I've learned how to use my brain, so I'm not saying that in any, in any way of suggesting I have a disability. Uh, I have an abundance of attention. My problem is where do I focus it? It's all over mm. the place. Uh, but it's also a very quick mind. It's a mind that can adapt. So when I'm writing, I will be on my main book and then this thought over here and I'll start, I'll just flip over to this other subcategory and I'll write on that and I'll come back to my main book. So I can, 
I can get lost in that process for hours at a time. And so it's just, you know, I find it fun, but I, 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 I always have, you know, the, the, the power of perception, the power of perspective. And, and, uh, my second book that, that is underway is it's actually called, uh, perspective, the ultimate superpower. That's, you oh, know, when you understand man. your perspective dictates everything. So that's my, you know, book. I call that one A. I'm on book, <laughs> but the law of action is something that I was really, really drawn to. And then I'll get something. So I'm always in between. And if you, it is not an efficient way to do it. I'm not recommending this concept to anyone <laughs> else, but uh, it's how I, it's how I work. Well, you wouldn't know this because you haven't been on the show a lot the last couple of years, but perspective, just ask any of the listeners. I bring that up just about every other week. <laughs> it's like, it has been, it has been a main topic around here. And, and what stimulated me to bring it up as a main topic is, uh, the last year, year and a half, especially, I've had lots of guests on besides the regular co-hosts and having all those guests on really made me appreciate perspective, uh, especially I when I get, when I get somebody on who I disagree with, which doesn't happen all yeah. that often, but yeah. it does happen. And, and you get somebody on you disagree with, you say, okay, he's full of crap, but it's interesting. <laughs> well, it, 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 it's, when you when you realize how reality is perspective based and you you know the the ultimate tool that that we have is my reality is created by my perspective of the world i see the perspective my world's different than a lot of people's world mm-hmm. i there there are some people that find themselves in the middle of a, a recession right now i'm not yeah. Yeah. um there there are I have an abundance. I have a, you know, I know people that are experiencing things that I'm not experiencing. So I accept that's their reality and that's their perspective, but their perspective of that turns things into reality. If you're miserable or, or whatever, if you, you have, uh, you know, a, a situation, you lose your job, you know, I, I'm unemployed or I'm ready for the next opportunity. I, I can't wait to see what the next opportunity I get a chance to, you know, that, that, that's the same thing that I lose my job. Or am I, I'm, I'm now prepared for my next opportunity. That's a perspective that I'm in charge of. Mm. And when you implement that perspective, you have, you have really hacked your own reality and yeah. you do it enough. That reality becomes your, your, your fact and you're living it. Then that's where the law of attraction becomes like on sort of on speed or superpower because you're literally living in this matrix of a perspective you created. And it just, it has no choice but to respond at that, that speed. The other thing that I found with perspective that I really, really like, especially when it's a perspective I don't have and, and one that I might even feel antagonistic toward is that by talking to somebody who has that perspective and, and listening and trying to appreciate why they have it, where they're coming from with it and so forth, I find over time that that gives me a tremendously higher level of acceptance than I had before. Absolutely. Yes. Because now, that thing that I perhaps might have vilified before, I don't vilify it anymore. I, I still don't, I still think it's full of crap, but at least I can understand where it came from. And in just in that understanding, it becomes much harder now to, you know, trap me into some sort of a negative emotional state because I've been exploring so many of them. You know, right. I, again, I don't want to live there necessarily, but now that I can appreciate it, well, okay. Yeah. I get, I kind of get that. I know it, it like Louis says. He says, once you know what you don't want, now you know where, you, where you're going to go with what you do want. And, and that's what it does. That, that's what that different perspective does for me. And also, uh, uh, when, you, when you can get to a place that other people's perspective in no way infringes on your perspective. And, and there's mm-hmm. – I, I, uh, I'll have – Whoop. Did we get a freeze here? Oh, dear. Joel seems to have frozen up. Oh, I lost you there for a second. Oh, there you are. Okay, good. You're back. (laughs) Yeah, I I don't know why it does that. I have perfect internet service right now. I'm at home, so I don't know what's going on. Uh, The but but the perspective a lot of times that I have with when I work with kids in foster care, for example, Mm -hmm. their perspective has been based on often very troubled and very. Uh, very negative environment. Yeah, sure. And so, so they, they develop a perspective. So they view the world. They grew up in a different United States of America than I grew up in because they, 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 so when I understand that there's an empathy that I bring to that table 
that I'm able to see, that I'm able to understand. You didn't grow up the same way. So the fact that you think all of this is bad or evil or whatever the term they're using or you whatever they're even antisocial thought, I understand that it was derived from their perspective. Now, once there's a, a, an understanding that I can I have an opportunity to share my perspective and show them evidence of another way. And then they're allowed to hack their perspective into real, a, a newer, a better reality. And I've seen that happen over and over again. So the, the, just like you're saying, it, it, it has given me a lot better at accepting people in general. I, uh, stuff that used to really frustrate me, some of the most frustrating people in the world, I can just accept. And I still may think it's wacky, but yeah, I expect sure. it. It's their perspective. I just, yeah. I, don't, I don't need to debate it. I don't have to be involved with it. I want to. But it also gives me the opportunity in my coaching practice to help people adapt their perspective to what they want. Because if you're living a negative perspective or a lack perspective, then you're, you, the law of attraction will never work in your favor. It will continue to work feeding you the lack side of that perspective. You know, as you were saying that, I started reflecting on a, a subject that we, we normally don't go into this kind of a subject and we won't do it here. Uh, but one of the... Uh, frustrations, I guess, that many people have today is that in the political world, there's this great, great big divide that, that a lot of people perceive and they get very frustrated about that. And it just occurred to me, as you were saying what you just said, that one of the main reasons that divide is perceived to exist is because of modern technology. Yes. Because I, I mean, I, I have my degree in political science, so I, I've studied all that stuff, you know, years ago. I, I, I've studied, you know, going back centuries of, of all the different historical information about it. And what's going on now really isn't all that different from what happened, say, in the 19th century. I mean, the, the characters are different, the, the issues are different, but the basic tension of it and so forth is pretty much the same. What's different is that more people are aware of it now because of the technology. Yeah. And, and so they're having to deal with it. They're having to kind of face, oh, my God, there's this horrible divide and those crazy people on the other side and blah, 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 blah. But an interesting thing. I think is happening that very few people have caught on to, but it's happening nonetheless. Through all of that experience of the craziness of the other side, people are beginning to find a level of acceptance for it that they never had before. And I don't think it's yeah. happening consciously yet. I don't think most people have noticed it yet, but I see it. I imagine you see it too. I, I see it fairly regularly. People, people who, you know, even 10 years ago would have just gone bonkers about something they still go bonkers at it, but, but now they're like, they're taking another look like, how crazy are those people anyway? You know, like, like they're thinking about it. They're focusing right. on it and they're reevaluating, you know, what they, what they thought they knew about it and so forth. And that can only lead to more acceptance. And, and, and I think, I think it's a great point because social media and this interconnectivity we have, I, I think it's allowed for extremism to, to flourish. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, I think it, it brought it to attention, you know, somebody that, that had a really isolated antisocial thought found a thousand other people that had that same antisocial. Exactly. You know, and so yeah. they all banded together, but the, 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 the universe has an amazing way of balancing it out. Also, the more that we start to realize, wait a minute, that group is really, you know, this is beyond an opinion. This is, this is extremism and this isn't healthy. You're, you're seeing more of that. So I, I have seen, there is this big push apart, but I am seeing a, at least a tendency to be more accepting because of that. There's usually new ground. You know, once you once you push out, then there's a, a natural contraction back, but there's more acceptance each time, I believe. So I think yeah. you're right. Yeah, that, that, and that acceptance may take some time. It may not yeah. show up right away. It may take decades. But at some point, everyone's going to, at different points along their journey, they're going to notice something's shifted here. Yeah, I may not be able to put my finger on it, but something has shifted. I wonder what it is. Right, and and that, that because when when you're around a bunch of people saying the same thing, when you're when you turn on the television and you say, you know, the the gross domestic domestic product is down, we're in a recession. The these numbers are up, and gas prices are five dollars, and they were two dollars, and you you start. So there's this narrative that we're we're lacking. There's a money, and so people have a tendency to quit spending. And they quit, they, they contract that, that causes a, a recession with it. When you buy into the world, the sky is falling, then the sky is falling. Yeah. Not because it's really falling, but because you're creating the sky falling by your thoughts. You know, the, the, the old double slit experiment and, and, you know, in metaphysics, or, you know, <laughs> metaphysics where that, you know, an observed particle acts different than an unobserved mm. particle. The yeah. 
the the attention you put toward uh, the, the the economy is if you really believe things are falling apart, they really are. So the the you get a group of people all saying the same thing, and then that actually starts to really be that reality. And it's just such a uh, uh, realizing your perspective changes that I choose to participate in recessions. I, I don't have recessions. They're not, they don't apply to me. So they aren't even part of your consciousness. That's really what no. the key, yeah. the key yeah. element right there. Yeah. Yeah. So and, and I'm not trying to sound arrogant or better than I just simply, it, it, it's, it's not, I don't allow that to influence the things, you know, the, mm-hmm. uh, if I need a new car, I go buy a new car. I want a new house, I go buy a new house. I do what I need to do or would like to do. And I, I, I've always had the law of attraction will always give to me what I believe. If I believe there's a recession, it's hard to find a house, then it's hard to find a house. Mm. Uh, if I believe I can find a house, it, it, you, you, it just works that way. If you, have, if you believe you're having trouble, con, trouble conceiving a baby, you're having trouble conceiving a baby. It's just there, there's countless areas in our life that your your perspective dictates the direct reality, and it is law of attraction. It's just understanding the levels of the law of attraction. It's uh, I know people that are trying to implement the law of attraction while maintaining a negative perspective and not realizing that that's not that is not a concurrent thought. It's interesting as you're saying that I'm I'm thinking about something that happened to me recently. Uh, I think I mentioned it on the podcast before. I, I mentioned it to you before we got started, but I recently had to replace my vehicle, and in the process of replacing that vehicle, um, I I stumbled upon a, a car that looked really interesting to me. It, had, it was talk about low miles. It had, it, it had like eleven thousand miles on it. It was an older car. It was like in immaculate shape, <clears throat> and I I tried to get it, but somebody already had a deposit on it with the dealership. And so I said to myself, you know what? I'm just going to wait this out a little bit uh, because uh, I picked up the signal that it had been – the deposit had been on there for more than a couple of days. So I thought maybe they're having trouble getting financing. Maybe you know, maybe it could fall through. Maybe I could actually you know, grab the car on the rebound, so to speak. Well, I ended up waiting 10 days, and it turned out they ended up succeeding in getting their, their financing, so they got the car. Now, I could have reacted, oh, God, I can't believe I lost the car. But that's not the way I reacted. What had happened was while I was waiting for it, I was getting myself all psyched up about having, you know, how great it would be to have a low mileage car and, and have that particular car. I, I'm a Camry guy and that would have been my sixth Camry in my life. So, you know, right in, in my, my wheelhouse, so to speak. Um, and then it fell through and I thought to myself, well, I've, I've, I've got all this energy. I got focused this way. Maybe I can find another one. You know, we've talked about that before. You know, one bus comes along, you miss the bus. Okay, I mean, there's another bus coming. So I did a little hunting. I couldn't find one that was 11,000, but I found that was 45,000. I ended up getting that one. And that happened within 24 hours. It took yeah. no time at all. The only thing that yeah. took time was that I had to wait for the dealership to open, you know, things like that. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, you had to operate. But, but that, I, I also want to, and, and I think you're saying this, but I, I think I posted this on Facebook there yesterday. You know, sometimes you miss the target and that's okay. And yeah. the, the, the target isn't always the target. I was talking to a young man today. He, he may be watching tonight. Uh, uh, one of my most successful clients and, and the target sometimes can place you where you need to be, where you can see the actual target. The mm-hmm. first target may be a, a, a fake target or a, the law of attraction's way to get you to that point where you're now you're looking there or you get to do things. You, the, the, when I was looking a few years ago, I was looking at, uh, um, I had to change office buildings. The lease was expiring where we're at. And I needed to upgrade offices and that's an annoying process. This is pre pandemic. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, you're, you're, there's a lot of options and you have to set these, uh, appointments and, and you have to meet with these real estate people. And it's just a, it's a, it's a cumbersome process where you're trying right. to run your practice and nobody meets after hours. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so I, I went, I had an appointment with this gentleman to look at this office suite and it was the perfect location where you need to be. I decided that I'm going to take this. And as I was waiting in the parking lot and he's 15 minutes late, then he's 20 minutes late and I'm calling his cell phone. He doesn't answer at the 30 minute mark. I'm getting really frustrated. Uh, he calls and says, Oh, I forgot about our appointment. I won't be yes. able to make it. Let's reschedule. Yes. So my initial reaction was, you know, I, I canceled an appointment today to be here. Yeah. Uh, so, so you cost me quite a bit of money to do that. And, and then I, then I just took a deep breath and said, there, look, you know, okay, this is what happened. So when w- it's almost like the moment that was lifted over me right across the street, 
was the sign that says office. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's wild. And I'm like, it was sitting there. <laughs> but, so, okay, but this, this gets better. So I'll walk over to the office suite. Now the, it's in this doctor, the group of doctors offices, there's several buildings there. And so I'm, I'm, I'm writing the guy's number down. And so the owner of the building happened to be there, the, the number of the real estate guy. So the owner comes up and he happens to, he's a doctor who we didn't know each other directly, but we knew a hundred people in between. He had heard of yeah. me. And of course I'd heard of him. Yeah. And and so we, we were just talking about it. And I said, well, I want to get with your realtor. And he goes, yeah, you're, you don't need to do that. Uh, we, we got a deal. We got, we, we just, <laughs> and so what became a cumbersome process became a simple process. And the deal was, was, was done with very little effort. And I was the, the first person I thought I missed my target. no, I needed to be there so I could be there at that moment when I could go out there and do this. So th- those things happen all the time in my life, but missing the target is sometimes the greatest thing we talked last time we, about the, the Hilton fortune, how it was made yeah. by going to buy a bank and he ended up buying a hotel and, and right. it ended up being a really good move. Same thing. He missed his target and still came out. Okay. You, you set your mind, the, the law of attraction, it isn't about getting always the exact thing you think you want is the concept of, of what it is and allowing that process to, to happen and missing the target sometimes is what's required to put you in a position to see that. It's a great point. And, and the key element in both of our cases was letting go of the old one, yes. letting go of that old target. Cause we could yeah. e- e- each one of us. I mean, I could have gone you know, ballistic over the fact that I lost out on, on this really great car. You could yes. have gone ballistic over the fact that the realtor hadn't shown up and he had, you had, you had, uh, canceled another appointment to be there and he was treating your time so uh, disrespectfully you could have gone off on that you would have missed the opportunity yeah. that was sitting yeah. right there yeah and, and that and that's the that's the thing when you're when you're looking the, the, there's always more there's always opportunities there's always situation but when we get so disappointed or stuck or you know the, the, there's multiple stories you know the, the, i think there's a ton of movies made about this but i, I know mm-hmm. real life stories where where people go out on dates and they meet somebody uh, not quite a good fit, but either while they're there, they meet somebody else or they, that led to meeting somebody else. I have a, a, a client who was doing, um, uh, I, I don't know the names of these apps, but one of the apps. Sure. And he, he, he was, you know, he's a 45 year old man, divorced. And, you know, he's like, God, I don't want to get a date again. Mm-hmm. So he, he's, he's on the app and he's, uh, meets this lady and he, she's a really nice lady, but they just, it wasn't even close connection. I mean, right. she was, she was extremely liberal. He was moderately conservative. Mm-hmm. Uh, she drank way too much. He didn't drink at all. So there was just not a, uh, uh there, there were not going to be. So, but they both had a pleasant evening and it was nice. They just agreed it wasn't a good set. Well, the next day she said, she texted and she said, yeah, I really appreciate meeting you last night. She said, it dawned on me, my, my, uh, my coworker literally matches up with everything. She is oh, scared cool. to get on the apps. Would you mind? Could I just introduce you to? I think you two would be a great. So the date that didn't work out introduced him to what became his wife. Right. His wife. Yeah. Oh, that, so it actually did yeah. turn into a marriage. That's really something. Yeah. Yeah, so it was amazing. And so, did the app work? Not really, but it did, sort of. I mean, <laughs> sort of, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it was so, it was an agonist. It got the, it got the process going. But that's it. it. It everything is that. That's that's. I believe the the law of action. We were talking about my book. Somehow we got way down this road. But we were talking about the, the law of action. That's the concept of the law of action. Take mm. action, and you keep taking action and that guidance scale within the action that that GPS, I call it of, of law of attraction, it will use those steps, no matter how wrong you may be turning How as long as there's action involved, you can't help but achieve these things. And that's where, that's what I find so fascinating. It's just the, the, this didn't work, but it always led to this, or uh, this fell apart. And, and I've never seen the, those stories just fascinate me in my personal life. And, and those that I work with just to see how, well, this happens, how that happened. One of, one of my clients, uh, had a, has a gambling problem and he worked for a major grocery store chain and he unfortunately was, you know, found himself, uh, pilfering funds from the grocery store chain. So oh, he, he, he got caught and he lost a job. He was the manager of one of these stores making really good money, uh, and was devastated. Mm-hmm. And so he ended up desperately came to me and we were working on his gambling problem, a really good guy. And 
we, we st- talked about the steps of how you stop gambling, but importantly, he had to take action. He had a wife and a kid. And so he, he went and took whatever job they could find. Well, mm-hmm. he was at Amazon. And so he, at Amazon, he's working. The, uh, it's a fair job, but it's very hard. They work you very hard. It's, it's not a great way. Job. Yeah. Warehouse type job. He's nonstop, but it was good for him. He kept his mind distracted, but he got really close to this one guy who had also lost his job, but just because of normal losing job situations. Mm-hmm. And so he went out and he found a job at this other company. And then he, then he went and he said, Hey, I love this company. Would you, I'm, they're looking for people to interview. And during this process, we, we were able to, uh, he was able to pay back the grocery store. Eventually charges were dropped. So his record, nice. was big, you know, so he was able to do that. Well, he ended up getting a job that paid almost twice as much as the grocery store paid Wow! with not near the hour, not the bad hours or the stress or whatever yeah. the room for advancement, much what, what most people would consider a more professional type job. Right. And he's been with that job for several years now. I've been promoted multiple times and him and I often talk about if that chain of events didn't happen, he wouldn't be where he's at. He's far right. happier now. Uh, it, 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 him and his wife are buying a house. They have a couple more kids. It's just this incredible story that doesn't happen without what seemingly not not even seemingly was a negative chain of events but it put him in direct position to allow the law of attraction to invite this much better scenario he never would have left the other job that never would have happened that way that's a great story i love that by the way you're also reminding me one of the things i loved about when you and i were doing the podcast together you had these great stories and they kept coming out episode after episode <laughs> you just gave us another one that's fabulous <laughs> It also reminds me, uh, like you mentioned before, um, you give out copies of The Secret. You've done that for years now. How, how many give? How many copies do you give out per year now? Is it like a thousand? I, I don't. I, I've, 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 we're in the over four thousand. I've given out over four thousand. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, I, so I, a, a considerable seven. number. Let's put it that way. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and, and one of the uh, criticisms of The Secret that I've actually had guests on the show mention to me um, on, on a, a couple of occasions that I can think of was they said, well. You know, the one thing that I didn't like about the secret is that they didn't act actually take action. They didn't say take action on stuff. And I kind of bought into the argument at first until I thought to myself, wait a minute, is that really true? So I went back and I played my, my copy of, of the, the movie. I actually played the copy that has Esther Hicks in it and listened to the whole thing. And I realized there was one scene where they didn't say take action. And, and you may remember it. It's the scene where there's the kid who wants a bicycle. And yeah. I, 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 the older man, I guess it was his grandfather, buys the bicycle for him. And that's the scene that this one particular guest was complaining about. He said, you know, the kid didn't have to work for it. He didn't have to take any action at all. That's not the way life works. What do you think of that? It, well, it, it, it's where you, it's, first of all, it's where you find points of argument. You know, when you're looking at, you know, I have had, I have had things happen that I can't explain. The law, especially, as I'm really, and I'm, I know people that, have have gotten things without taking action. I really have. I have always believed action was a necessary component in my manifestations. I've mm-hmm. shared that with you many times. Yes. Uh, I, I don't always know what the action is, but I'm, I'm taking some action, and I believe that's the action which always I, I trust will always lead me to the other action. So I believe, and, and this goes back to our bigger topic. I believe that the law of action is a, the the action piece is necessary for the law of attraction. So my law of attraction process only works with action. That's the only way it works for me. So again, that's a belief. It's built into my perspective. So it can't operate unless I'm, I'm fully in. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you, you know, so when somebody's watching the secret and they're saying, well, this is what they're saying. Again, you're taking a snippet when everybody else is talking about action, you're taking a snippet and you know, the, 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 the idea that that one somehow represents what the secret is talking about is not really fair. It's not accurate either. Yeah, yeah, no, it's not. Because it, I actually checked all the scenes. Every other scene talked about taking yeah. action. It was the only yes. one that didn't actually talk about taking action. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, so you're taking one scene where you know, the, you know, I have uh, uh, you know, my son, great kid, he's doing fantastic. You know, I'll, I'll, he he manifests all the things all the time because I just simply buy them for him. He doesn't have to do anything for him. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know. I have one of, one of my dearest friends is a little kid that lives across the street from me. I've known him since he's been tiny and he, he's got me down pat. If he just says, I need this, <laughs> it, he manifests that. I'll, and, 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 you know, he just, whatever he wants, I get him. 
and it's not because I, because I care about him. I've known him for so long. So it, it, I'm not saying it can't happen, but but the idea that the the this the secret was was intended to be a very remedial, light opening to the concepts of the law of attraction, and it mm, did a great yes. job with that. It did. Uh, it it really it really hit on the the concepts, and it opened the door for many people to go deeper. Uh, but I don't take it as you know, it's the masterpiece on the law of attraction. There's a lot of it in there that's sort of like, eh, you know, but it, but it, it's a great starter book. It is. There's no doubt about that. And the, I think the proof is in the pudding because, like you've said many times, you've given it away. Uh, virtually everybody who comes into your office, you give them a copy of it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I This time at Christmas, what I do uh, is there's a lot of homeless people out on the streets mm. and they're begging. So I have, uh, I've, you know, I think seven of them so far. I put a $50 bill in the secret and I hand the homeless people on the side of the road a book <laughs> with the $50 bill in. So, you know, most people take it and they're like, oh, God, a book, you know. But then they open it up, there's a $50, they're, they're excited. So one day, this I, I pull up to the stoplight, this guy looks at the book and he calls me some bad names and he throws the book off to the side. And I said, have a good day. And I just drove <laughs> off. And uh, <laughs> I'm imagining somebody came across and found this book. Yeah. Opened it up. There's this 50. Uh-oh. Oh, we just had Joel drop off. Oh, no. In mid-story, in the middle of a good story. Oh, I hope he's able to reconnect. Here he comes. Okay. He's almost here. He's got, oh, we got oh. an image. Okay, yeah, now he's back. There you are. Yeah, somebody somebody called. I have a do not disturb my phone. Somehow that came through. I don't know. That's all right. So, That's right. Yeah, but but, but anyway, uh, you you talked about how uh, the, the guy threw the book away, and then, yeah, and then you started to talk about what might have happened, and that's where you got yeah, cut off. Yeah, and so I, I'm hoping somebody came along, found the book, said, oh here, and then found the fifty dollar bill, in it, and then and then still was the intention. But you know, the, the idea that the secret to me, it it I could give people. Fifty dollar bills or hundred dollar bills or give them a thousand dollars, and unless there's something that's going to accompany that gift that gets them beyond that, they're going to be homeless and begging forever unless mm-hmm. a mindset changes. Yes. And the secret from any place. I have been homeless. I have slept in a flower bed. I have eaten out of a trash can, and I don't do that anymore. And and it, I don't have to do that anymore. And it's those concepts that made that happen for me. And so it, it's, a, uh, it's a very action-based concept, but sitting around doing the same thing over and over again is never a positive. And it just, uh, the, the, the secret never to me ever said, don't take action. It, it's, it, you know, there, there are parts of Abraham Hicks that you know, in, in, in any of their books where Esther will say, I, I kind of several times she'll say, well, no action is necessary. Mm-hmm. Then later she'll say, action is actually more powerful than yeah. thought. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm like, okay, well, Esther, you know, and, and I'm, I'm not criticizing <laughs> Esther because she, she's way out of my league, but you get my point. So, but also they take action. At, at, I find it interesting. You know, uh, there's a lot of law of attraction gurus, but Joe Vital or Vitali, I don't remember his name, sure. how to say it. Yeah. Anyway, he's this guy that I've always, he, he's always doing law of attraction stuff. One of his concepts is you shouldn't work hard. You should just think about these things. Well, mm-hmm. If you ever get on this guy's mailing list, he will send you <laughs> yes, 90 – he's, he's up all night creating programs. And I'm thinking, dude, you're telling you, – this one of the hardest working men I've ever seen is telling people – and I laugh at that because his message is, you know, without any thought or energy, I'm going, your brain doesn't stop. He, he is right. always producing content. He has yeah. – he has thousands. If you get on his mailing list, you're, you're going to have to unsubscribe because he's relentless. He's oh, relentless. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's yeah. True. Every, every day, last chance, last chance for 50% off <laughs> seven weeks later, last day for last chance. And it's like, uh, but you know, it's, it's also one of my, one of my heroes, heroes we lost or last either earlier this year or last year, uh, Bob, Bob Proctor. Proctor. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Bob Proctor is to me, one of the classical law of attraction guys. Yeah. He was he was a big proponent you know, proponent of action and thought and all coming together and believing and tuning in and energy vibration. And he he was a hard, uh, well well into his eighties. He was he was traveling the world giving seminars and and just yeah. incredible energy. I had the privilege to meet him twice. And oh, you uh, did. 
Yeah, yeah, really, really powerful man. And uh, it, it just, he was a very action-oriented person. Mm, yes, definitely true. He, he was also, he, I, I believe he got his initial training from Earl Nightingale. Yes. And, and many listeners won't know who Earl Nightingale was, but he was he was quite a voice. And I mean literally a voice in oh, the 1950s voice. and 1960s. Yeah. You know, yeah. Deep, resonant kind of voice. And, and he often would, uh, he'd be a narrator for a course or for a pro television program or something like that. And, you know, the, the, the kind of life he had was a relatively quiet life compared to say a TV star or a movie star, but it was a vibrant life. And, and I think that that was probably what he passed along more than anything else to Bob was yes. vibrancy. You know, you talked about vibration, but vi there's also a vibrancy, a vibrant life. And, and, and it inspired Bob in a way that turned him into who he became bob proctor yeah and that, and that that is that's one thing that you talk about that energy vibration there's there's he's one of the people that i've been around you know that i feel a connection with i met him mm. and uh, his energy was tangible it was uh uh very we were very well spoken i met him once met him several years later he remembered my name from a really meeting. yeah wow. and, and he goes joel right and I go, yeah and we started talking and uh, it, you know, it, it just, I, I shared with him briefly my concept of the law of attraction and addiction and recovery. And he loved that concept. Uh, and so he, you know, he, he had that energy, but you know, when you and I first were doing the podcast, our very first podcast, it's like, we've known each other for 10 years, you know, it's just, we, yeah. we just started off and we started going. So there, there's an energy vibration that is within all of this, that vibrancy you're talking about, uh, chance meetings, the synchronicity of stuff. All of that is tied into this. There, there is, there's a connection that I haven't, I haven't quite figured it all out yet, but I'm certainly aware of it. And that vibration level that Bob Proctor, Proctor was talking, he talked a lot about energy vibration a mm -hmm. lot. He did. Yeah. Well, yeah. what you're, when you're saying that, it's reminding me, you, you mentioned earlier, um, quantum physics. You, you made yeah. reference to it through the double slit experiment and so forth. Um, one of the aspects of quantum physics that is so fascinating is the fact that it is a validation of the power of observation. Because yes. like you, you were pointing out, you know, an, 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 an event will change simply because someone is observing it. And yes. when I, when I take that idea and I expand it out, I realize that, that the someone doesn't have to be a human being. It can be yeah. an animal. It can be, yeah. it, it, and, and you take the Einsteinian concept of how the universe is organized. He was one of the first ones, I think. I'm pretty sure he was the first one who pointed out that even empty space is full of energy. Yes. Yes. Which, which was an astonishing concept to put but out it, there. It, but, yeah, but, 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 but what it does for me is it, it reminds me since everything is full of energy everywhere and energy is all about vibration because that's what energy does. Energy is constantly in motion. So that's what, you know, that's the nature of vibration. When I, when I look at it that way, then it becomes really easy for me to understand how it is that, for instance, you and I could do that first show back in 2012 or 2013 or whatever it was and instantly connect. I mean, certainly we had a shared value. We had a shared interest in law of attraction and so forth. But if you look at it from the larger perspective of how vibration works and, and how what, what they often call um, race memory works, we all are connected. <laughs> The, the more amazing part would be how, how could we have a relationship with somebody where there isn't some sort of a transfer of information? There isn't some sort of a, of a, 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 a comparator that's like, wow, you same vibration over there as it is over here because we are all connected in that way. That's, and, and one, one of the powers that I, I feel I, I implement well or the techniques I use well is when somebody's in my office, the, and it works, it works this way too, but much better in my office. Uh, when they're in my office, I am able to, uh, exchange energy with them. I, they, they mm. pick up my energy. I, I very much a body language guy. I use my hands. I lean forward. They lean forward and there's right. a connection. They don't even know that happens. And, uh, th there's, there is an experiment done, uh, of resident talking about you know, residency. Not residency. I, I, you can say it better for me. Uh, Resonance. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I was not going to get that out right. But uh, the experiment was under the guise of there, there was this uh, a group of students who agreed to be monitored while they listened to music 
and to see how music affected their mood. That was what the exper- they were told the experiment was. Right. That was not the experiment. So right. they got it. They got everybody in the auditorium. They had them all hooked up with their equipment. They can measure heart rate, rate and breathing. And so they, they just said there's going to be about a 15 minute delay as we get the equipment set up. So there is a, a background sound check that basically had a, 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 a bump, 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 and it just a sound, just a beep, beep. And they increased it. And as they increased that, the, the speed of the beep, Everybody started talking faster. It got louder. And every, everybody, everybody's heart rate came. You know, it, it came together. Uh, everybody's heart rate you know, went went up with that beat. Nobody knew this was going on. Right. They were measuring. Then they lowered the beat. It got quieter, and then yeah. the heart rates went back down to about. So everybody was be, they, they were unintentionally tying into uh, the 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 sound. And so that, how much that's that's just a, the energy vibration of sound. Right. So when you have emotion attached, one of the one of the topics that I'll I'll dive in. Sorry if you get in trouble for this, but uh, no, the there, there are no bars here. You go for okay, it. Okay, so so those that uh, in in God bless you that those are the situation. But several of my friends who grew up with you know a couple of daughters and their wives, females cycle come together. If if most people don't know that, so when they have their period. Females that are all in that process of menstruating, eventually when they live together, they, they sink their, their periods. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now mm-hmm. that's, that's an energy vibration that, you know, yeah. you know, and so without getting in and trouble. There, and and really- there are lots of examples of that. The one that comes to my mind quickest is grandfather clocks. Exactly. They, they do, but not as scary as the other one. Just no, no. <laughs> <laughs> A little less dramatic, perhaps. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but the pendulums of, of, of identical size and shape grandfather clocks, they can start off out of sync with each other. And within, I think it's like a week, they will be within sync. There, there's several YouTube videos of, of just pendulums sitting on a desk, all out of sync. And at very, it, it, it times how long they, but they all come together in, it, in their synchronistic at, at within a certain period of time. Mm-hmm. And th- you can look that, that, that stuff on video, that, but there is it, an energy. There's no, there's no human involvement in that. That is right. a machine syncing with another machine. So there, there's, there's something to that we're missing. So when you're around like-minded, positive people, you're picking up on that energy. They're lifting you up. That energy, that's a very exciting thing. That's, that's one of the bases of my practice is when people can feel what I believe and feel the energy, they know it's authentic. They feel better. They walk out the door saying, I don't know why, but I feel better than I walked in. Yeah. That's sort of the point. Well, that's, a, that's where the uh, subtitle of the podcast came from. Cause I, you'll remember, I didn't have a subtitle the first few years that we did this, but right. around year four, something like that, year four, year five, I added your daily dose of happy. Because yeah. that's exactly what I wanted to accomplish with every episode. I wanted everyone who listened to kind of get onto that same vibrational level and have their day be better just because they listened to the podcast. And that's yeah. exactly the way it's worked out. It's been yes. wonderful because of that. Um, yeah. But 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 it just it's another example, another way of illustrating exactly what we're talking about. That Fantastic. synchronicities yeah. happen, and they and, yeah. and 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 they happen normally. It's it's not an abnormal thing. Synchronicity is part of the norm. We, we may not, as a society, we may not recognize that, but it's true anyway. Synchronicity constantly is going on. It, it, it's amazing. And, and, and the, the, it always, if anything, I'm, I'm always filtering for synchronicity now. So I see more of it and it's mm. fascinating. It's just the people that, that get brought into my, my, one of, one of my neighbors said something and, you know, and uh, she's, uh, I, I'm like, up, oh, that's a sign. And she goes, Joel, I think that's enough of the signs. I mean, you know, we're, <laughs> <laughs> and I do, I, I see a sign in everything, you know, it's like, uh, yeah. and, and so maybe I'm, I'm over attracting synchronicity, but, but it is, it, it, it's just miracles have happened that I can't explain that were synchronistic in nature that all I can do is just accept they happen, that there's no explanation of why. And, uh, it, it's this time of year, I, I don't know, two or three years ago, uh, one of my, not a dear friend, but she's since become a dear friend. But uh, at the time, she was sort of an acquaintance, a neighborhood acquaintance. And uh, she's a principal at a school. Mm. And so this time of year, I normally help out with families or do something and, you know, just somebody that needs help. And so I, I, I didn't know who to 
call. So I just texted her and said, uh, you, you, a little late in the season here, but you know, anybody looking for help, you know, I, I'd be glad to donate some money to help her. And, and her first response back was, she said, did God tell you to call me? <laughs> and I'm like, no, maybe I'm not sure. And, uh, and, and she said, I literally a few minutes ago just got an email from a lady saying she, she's sorry to, she, she's sorry to ask so late, but she isn't going to be able to provide Christmas for her kids. And with, I, I texted her within 10 or 15 minutes of her receiving that email. That's cool. Um, yeah. So again, now it's a minor one, but I was able to help out, but it, it, it just that idea that that kind of stuff happens all the time. It's yeah. exciting to me. And, and I, I think that's sort of the concept that I've, you know, because of that, you know, I, I'm, I'm, we've become really good friends. This lady and I, it, you know, her family, we're all good friends now. And I think that was sort of a catalyst to say, wow, there, there's certainly sure. an involvement there. Yeah, that's fabulous. What a great way to to wind up the episode today. I, as usual, we ripped through an hour, right? That, 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 oh, I just, oh, wow. Can, yeah. can you believe that? I, that? We used to say that every single week, right? Because we, we, we yeah. used to do it weekly at that point. And like, wow, that hour went fast. And it just didn't. It move. did. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm looking forward to uh, the coming new year because one of my new year's resolutions, you know me, I don't usually do new year's resolutions, but one of my new year's resolutions in advance of the new year is to do more shows with Joel Elson. So well, I, I, I hope we can make that happen because I do, as I've said before, this is, this is one of my highlights of when I do this, I always feel better. I enjoy my good friend Walt all the time. We, we, uh, I feel better anytime we, we get to talk. So, uh, Thank you so much for reaching out today and, and yeah. hopefully this happens again soon. Yeah. And thank you for being available today. Talk about synchronicity. I mean, cause you Absolutely. have a crazy schedule and it still worked. It, it's like, it oh, worked out perfectly. Nice. Yeah. I love it. All righty. Okay. Thank you, my friend. And thank you to our podcast listeners everywhere. We'll see you all next time here on LOA today. Goodbye, everybody. Mm-hmm.